Hello folks! In this episode, we're going to take a look at the ATX board from GLINet that you can buy as an accessory to your Comet KVM. This board is a smart power management card that enables the remote control of the power supply for the computer under control of the Comet. Essentially, this allows you to remotely simulate pushing the power button of the remote system. If you are not familiar with the general operation of the Comet KVM, See our previous video from the link up here or in the description below. This video is mainly focused on the ATX card which allows you to remotely control the power switch of the remote system so that even if the machine is off, we can turn it on via comment. This is a really cool feature that pure software KVMs can't give you. With the ATX board, you gain complete control of the remote system's power. You can restart unresponsive systems, you can power on fully shut down PCs, and pretty much ensure a 24-7 availability. All right, so I'm going to open up the box for the GLATX. So what we got here is a USB-A to USB-C cable that connects the Comet to the ATX board. We have two mounting brackets and screws, so you can have it for shorter or longer slots. And then there is the 9-pin wire set that connects between the motherboard and the ATX board. And of course, the ATX board itself. If you look at the GLATX board, you will notice that there is a USB-C interface on top so that you can connect to the Comet. On the bottom of the board, you will see two sets of interface pins. On the left side are the pins that you connect to the F panel on the motherboard of the computer you want to control. On the right side are the pins that you want to connect to the power panel of your computer. The documentation says that these interfaces can be connected interchangeably, meaning the left side can be connected to the power panel and the right side to the F panel. And that's actually what I did to make sure that my cables can reach, and sure enough, it does work. If you take a closer look at the pinouts printed on the board, you will see that there are connections for the positive and negative of the power button, the reset line, the power LED, and the hard drive LED. The first thing you want to do is to figure out which of the two brackets will fit the computer that you have. Then you want to screw the ATX board to that bracket with the screws provided. Next is the tricky part. You will need to find the cables which connect the power board of the computer to the F panel on the motherboard. Some motherboards have the F panel labeled, so if you have that, you are lucky. Every computer is different, but I found that if you look for the power button on the chassis and then look behind it and trace the wires, that should ultimately leave you to the F panel of the motherboard. You then disconnect those cables from the F panel and connect those pins to the right side of the ATX board. Then take the 9-pin wire set that came with the ATX board and connect the keyed end to the left side of the ATX board and then the other end with the loose cables you want to connect those to the F panel where you had previously removed the connectors. The good thing about these 9-pin connectors is that they're keyed at one end, so you can't insert it wrong unless you try to brute force it, in which case you'll end up bending and breaking one of the pins. So keep in mind that the connectors should easily fit, otherwise you probably have it upside down. Every motherboard is different, and on the computer I was working on, which was an Acer Predator, the pinouts were not printed on the motherboard, and there was no manuals to be found on the internet. Thank goodness for people who help each other out. I found this diagram drawn on a cardboard box, but it helped me tremendously, so thank you. Lastly, don't forget to connect the USB-C interface to the Comet with the USB cable provided. I was so obsessed with getting the 9-pin wire set connected properly, I forgot about the USB and sat there for quite a while wondering why things didn't work for me. Essentially what we just did was to find the power connection of the computer, disconnect it, and insert the ATX board in the middle. This action will allow the Comet to simulate pushing the power button of the computer without having someone physically there pushing the button. This is very cool. One thing to mention is that the interface polarity may be switched depending on the computer chassis you have. So if things don't work, you may want to reverse the power BTN cables and try it again. Once everything is hooked up, your Comet should have something plugged into every port. The Ethernet port should be connected to your network switch so that the Comet can communicate via the network. 
The power port should be connected to power because this model does not support power over Ethernet. On the top side, the USB 2 port should be connected to the USB-C port of the ATX board. The HDMI port should be connected to the HDMI output of the computer. And the USB-C port should be connected to the USB port of the computer so that mouse and keyboard signals can go to the computer. All right, let's go ahead and test out the ATX board. With our machine off, as we can see in the comment web interface, you know, because it says no HDMI signal detected. If you go to the accessories tab, you should see that it is connected to the ATX power board. And so you will see three buttons. So for power with a short press, power with a long press, and restart. If we hover over the question mark, we see that the short press means about half a second, whereas the long press is about six and a half seconds. Let's first hit the short power button. We get a panel asking for confirmation that you indeed want to press the button. I will answer confirm. Immediately, I can hear the fan on my computer turn on, and then shortly after, I see the BIOS screen. And then I get the grub menu for my system, and then it fully boots. All right, so once it's done fully booting, I can press the short button again. And we see that this causes the system to bring up the shutdown panel, just like if the power button was pressed for a short time. If we cancel out of that, we get back to normal operations. Now what happens when I do the long press? This again simulates one holding down the physical power button, which causes a hard shutdown of the computer. Once I hit the button, we get a panel asking for confirmation that you indeed want to press the button. I answer confirm. And a few seconds later, I hear the computer fan stop working and the lights all turn off. And as you can see from the web interface, we get no HDMI signal detected. And I can see that the computer is indeed in the off state. So doing the long press basically does a hard shutdown. And from this powered off state, I will hit the short press power button again to turn on the computer. And we're going to wait a few moments for everything to boot back up. And once things are booted back up and running, I am going to hit the restart button. And so what the reset button is going to do is that it is going to restart the machine. So essentially we're going to see the initial bio screen and then the grub screen and so forth. So as you can tell, I really like this ATX board as it adds the really cool ability to control the power button remotely. Of course, the caveat is that this board only works with systems where you can access the power control signals, which pretty much eliminates laptops, mini PCs, Raspberry Pis, etc. Unless you're really good at soldering. So basically, this really only works for desktop computers and servers. The hardest part of installing this card is finding the pinouts for your particular computer. So you really have to scour the internet for the diagrams. But once you find the pinouts, it's just a matter of putting the cables into the right pins. For another video on networking, watch this video here. For more networking videos, make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.